Hello, ladies and germans, how you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. I'm Ring Roo, lo, lo, lo. And folks, today on the map that looks like a gingerbread man of Orsha East, uh, we have who, Rang? Left hand side, I'm blue. We have Kato Megumi, dot, zed, zed, plain as Hartnake, with flatline. And on the right hand side, we have Charles, we have Polis First Infantry, we have a Vanguard income. <clears throat> you know, I see my least favorite opening happening here from Kato. Oh, Ersatz Troopin. And Ersatz MGs. It's Ersatz Oof. everything. It's bringing all the reserves out front immediately. And speaking out front, Charles is really rushed that town of Jeeps. Just Jeeps galore, PTRSs, flamethrowers, other things that are Polish. Well, think about it this way. I mean, it's a super cheap process. Mm hmm Yep, 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 yep. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> uh, now we've disappeared. See, it is Ersatz Troopin. Fighting on the road, and this this is that that one mission in Brothers in Arms, like where where everything's aflame and everyone's dying. That this yep. is, this is the absolute worst mission in the world. Oh, but holy crap, they they're, they're holding off against quite mighty odds in the open, mind you. Popping some smoke, and the flamethrower dude is going to get away from that, which is rather surprising. It's more surprising to me the airsoft troop in the center. I'm sorry to cut you off, but the, in the middle we actually have a, a successful push into the town. Yeah. I'm sorry, though. I completely cut you off. You're about to no, say no, so. No, no, yeah. This, the the flamethrower survived, which is bizarre. That is a very polite way to put it. It just completely flabbergasts me. Mm -hmm. Now we do see some right to Jaegers coming in behind the airsoft troop, and these guys, of course, will be successful in keeping the scrubs to at bay. But, I mean, they have those meat shields in the way. Mm hmm. I gotta run right into the flamethrowers, and that's not gonna be good for their health. But they will be able to survive. Certainly true. And the battle, if you're uh, up to the north, kind of amusing to me. Only guy who can see the enemy. <laughs> Guys, help me out! I'm your leader! Exactly, it's like, this is. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. You're, the, you're meant to be getting shot at, not me. I'm just here to call in artillery strikes. Exactly. Exactly. Respect the position. Mm hmm. Uh, down to the south, we are seeing a rather tentative push to a very, very depleted squads. I such troops moving on in. Able to extend deep into the Polish lines. This until I think this IL-2 comes in with clusters. I think and if he sees that Hetzer again, he's going to drop clusters all over that guy. Yeah, that's probably the best bet. But for my money, if I can start seeing these T-34s, I'm going to the T-34s in the center. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of VKs. In the meantime, looking around, seeing some nice, solid uh, play here. Engaging the troops to the north in the forest. Need a little bit of help, because that PTRD is going to kill if he's not careful. Yeah, the, uh, Luke's is doing, or Luke's prototype, I should say. He's doing a rather good job here, keeping him suppressed, at least, and... There we go. That's going to be one PTRD squad down for now. Yes, one. There's still uh, two more. And that's the major rub, isn't it? Mm. They can clear this northern forest. It actually might be very easy for them. It can definitely move in that pack 36 hanging behind the front lines. Excuse me. Wow. No. Wow. Uh, there's this. Uh, what, the pack 184. My bad. Yeah. And an interesting decision there. Yeah, and the kills the Luke's. I, I, I see why did Jack because that pretty much was holding him back from you know pushing up north. And you know if you can get in close to those flamethrower guys, he should be able to you know start killing some Kato's dudes. It's really like that right Jaeger squad, which is the real scary force here. And he almost almost has it killed. Almost has it suppressed at least, which is pretty much a kill in this case. Now, you see recently there's somebody posting actually in the Reddit um, trying to agitate for a different approach to surrender mechanics. I've just, seen the post, but I haven't read it, so to Fully speak. digested it. it. It makes things definitely a little more RNG, but I have to confess, looking at the northern side, yes, we have leading units in the area, but I couldn't help but feel that, you know what, it might not be the worst idea in the world. What I have was his no idea proposal? how to implement it, though. I'm sorry? What was his proposal for surrender uh, mechanics? If I understand it correctly, it's essentially a lot more kind of RNG 
So there's a certain amount that they just kind of surrender, but at the same time, there's a chance they just kind of fight on. And I want to say, with kind of decreased infantry efficacy, um, so it's kind of a weird, a weird interplay of, of relationships. I'm not sure it's something that can be effectively integrated, but I, I will, I will admit, I'm surprised it's taken as long as it has to have someone speak up again about this. I know you and I have had endless discussions about the idea. And forgive me, I'm watching this T34 duel to the north. Uh, the wet noodle contest of a thousand years. Oh, never mind. That uh, noodle is is quite al dente. Yeah, eventually a T34 will win. Just depends which color. Yep. And unfortunately, for over here on you know the the heart neck side, they're apparently saying it's better dead than red. It's not helpful. We actually have three more T34 E's moving on, and so tall, tall odds. Mm -hmm. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. Down south, things are actually going really well for Charles as he is pushing through. The cluster IR2 did drop its payload somewhere, but I forgot where it did. And yeah, I mean, he's got the town in the center, he's got down south. Up north is not looking good for him, but, you know, two out of three flanks, you can't, can't really complain. I'm sure he'd find a way to if necessary, but you're right. I think yeah. for right now things are effective. Now, the thing in, is, for Charles, in the northern side, he's got a rinky-dink, kind of like, half-outdated anti-tank gun stopping his progress, and that's it. <laughs> a Rus he's using the Russian gun to blow up Russian tanks. But the Russian gun can't get through said Russian tanks, because it's Russian, it's not designed to friendly fire. Well, it's probably a joke now that it did, but, you, you know. They got friendly fire disabled. Well, we have a number of flak tracks moving on in, which is kind of interesting. Definitely trying to keep those cluster runs away. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, it, ooh, and it's Higer as well. I kind of miss that big cat coming on in. Uh, but, I don't know. I have to say that the relative silence only plays into Cato's favor. I don't think it plays into Charles's. Yeah, yeah. I mean, once you get into B phase. You see Hartnick starts to get pretty scary with the Hungarian troops. But right now, Charles has really good map control. And if he can keep it up, he should, you know, should secure the victory. I mean, he's got tank Destinites coming into the center to try and secure an area too. Yeah, right, Jaeger's Rabbi, he's going to run right into it. It's probably not the best idea. No, that's putting it mildly, of course. I am mildly amused by the fact that this ME-109 has not been able to do anything effective just yet. <laughs> He's just having a hard time. You know, dogfighting. So this is, I don't want to say it's first time, but he has one cell veteran, so he should have shot down a plane or two already. You'd like to think that, wouldn't you? I'd like to. I'd like to. But the flak is doing more... I, I, You know, it's lucky that there's not friendly flak on. I know, right? He'd, he'd really be buggered. Oh, yeah. That was, oh, yeah. that was a pretty big issue, I believe, in the second world draw, with uh, flat gunners accidentally shooting down their own airplanes. Yes. Yes, you're absolutely right on that one. Um, even in naval aviation, there's troops coming in to land, <laughs> which just blows my mind. You think that this guy, if he's going to kill you, he's not going to be like, oh, humdy dum, I'm going to go no. nice and easy and low. Coming right for us. They even have our kind of planes. Oh my god, they put stars <laughs> on them, bastards. <laughs> Now, I, I do admit, I'm surprised that the flak, with three flak tracks, they're not getting a little bit more depression than what they have. My L2s, man, they are they're built like tanks, but somehow they can fly. I actually kind of like this as well. We actually have a Hetzer moving in to try to stave off any push by his T-34Es. Now, the unfortunate thing is that there's no real infantry anywhere close to the area because the air such trooping moving into the northern side of this long, long hill. But, um... He's gonna lose another flag here. I'm quite surprised at just how quickly the tables have turned up north. I mean, Charles is now pushing strong. I mean, he's got, like, the flag outside the forest, he's moving up the infantry, he's got T-34s galore. Yeah, Kato, he... Yeah, yeah, that Hetcher, uh, now Tiger, is gonna be... Well, Tiger's moving into the center. It's going to be pretty vitally important in stopping, stopping these tanks. Vitally important that IL-2 in the meantime, though, making a run. 
And somehow the enemy one or nine still doesn't kill him. I know. Jeez Louise. Uh, Tiger, like you said, I don't even see him moving on in. Where is he going? Okay, yeah, he's going to the side here, right? Down to the south in the meantime as well. I mean, it looks like all things are coming up Millhouse over here for Charles. Person very strong here of the Strokey, uh, TP Scrooge, essentially. Yeah, I mean, Charles is a very... That was a very good A phase for him. He put all his best cards out early on, all the great infantry, and he has managed to make dividends out of it as he is pushing very strong on pretty much all flanks. That's good that someone's getting something out of the market here because as of right now, it definitely does not seem to be working for Kato. Mm hmm. All the road economy in general. Well, yeah, and you know yeah. what, I mean, I, I kind of understand where the markets are at right now, but man alive, it is hard to watch your investment on both of these flanks just kind of crumble. Yeah. Speaking purely, of course, about the game and not my own investments. <laughs> uh, but you know what, in the meantime, we are going to see this head up to the north. He's going to continue to kind of pwn off these little rinky-dink half-tracks, which is fine from one perspective, but it's like, okay, his cannon is meant for bigger prey. I know. Needs to blow up some, uh, some T-34s here. Yeah. Hungry. Yes, he does. Just as this looks down south, needs to go and engage something more behind the stroke he sees, uh, CKMs. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for him, not going to go well. But outside of that, 59, of course, coming up on... Actually, we're into Phase B right now. Um, now, is it the the flat line that's been the downfall thus far of Kato? Or do you think it's something else altogether? I think... I think it's the Airsat Troop opener. Wait, uh, but you said that Airsat Troop I know, I know, I know, I know. Okay, I was making it's, sure we, had, we heard that right. His infantry just... Was doing well of the right Jaegers... But he didn't really have other stuff to support the infantry, like, more... I don't know, at the same time, Charles had a very good opener. We have great infantry, the, like, the T-34 spam at first polar scare is absurd, and on maps like this, where you can fight in close quarters encounters, works out really well. I think Kato just needed more heavier AT earlier on to try and curb the kind of like how those T-34s just multiply like bloody rabbits. Because once you get to like half a dozen of those T-34s, you just, you're not going to have a good time. And also, Charles has been doing fantastic with the air power. True. Yeah. True. And of course, the flak tracks are not been enough to stop it. It's yeah. going to be a dead head soon. Yeah, even with Kato bringing out actual anti-air, it's not enough. And even the Messerschmitts are... They just can't kill his goddamn IL-2s. It is absurd. And Korok is not, you know, lacking in air power. They got a crap ton of his Hungarian Messerschmitts. You mean Hartnick? Hartnick, yes. Okay, so I'm not sure. I was like, Korok was like, I know my insignia study sometimes is a little bit lacking, but... Uh... Um, now, we are going to see a bunch of Hungarians come to the center, and indeed, we see a little bit to the south, a couple come to the south, the south central as well. So, um, it's going to be up to the Hungarians to stabilize this entire process. Yeah. If they can push this back, there still is a ghost of a chance. It's a very slim one, but it's still a ghost of a chance. I know we definitely do talk up the Hungarian infantry quite a lot, but they are really that yeah, good. It's just, just due to the fact that you have semi-automatic rifles, croton crew. And just large infantry sizes make him a terrible, terrible force to fight against. Well, and let's talk about the fact that their accuracy stuff is is pretty damn good, even on the LG uh, LMGs. Mm -hmm. The sixty five percent. I mean, look at the other stuff. Yes, yeah, sixty percent for the you know for the PPSHs. I mean, the light machine guns five percent for the Stroke CKMs. I mean, uh, is nice when you're a knife fighter. And they got free again. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but in the meantime, though, these IL-2s have just been devastating the the Hardneck lines. Absolutely devastating them. I mean, the Hungarians are coming in now. He's doing an uh, attack along the hill in the middle. 
And he's actually starting to get a bit of a foothold. But yeah, there's a few, you know, there's like a few T-34s in pretty good positions. And yeah, it's just a little bit of a kill zone area. As a, yeah, like initial foothold onto said hill. It he's going to get into the town, but he's going to get flamed. Where's the arty in all this? That's a really good point. I mean, the Harnig doesn't get a lot of artillery, to be fair. But no, still, but there's still enough to be effective. Yeah, it's still, you can get, like, some Mortal half tracks, which is always the uh, ultimate artillery choice to to take. I also have a couple of strokes coming north of the town. Uh, maybe looking to cut off? Yep, yeah, looking to cut off, I think, the German kind of uh, approach here. There are some right to the Aegis, but the right to the Aegis are fired, because this would not be sporting. And the Hungarians are certainly putting the fire on, but uh, not getting the kills quite as quickly as they might need. Oh, he's uh, he is pushing, but yeah, Charles is 19 over 5 on Cater at the moment. I mean, the southern flank is almost crumbled. I mean, the Hungarians are holding on to that southern middle hill, but the far south side where the flanks are is really the important part. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Even if they take this back, I mean, uh, say they go back to 12-12, which looks exceedingly difficult under the circumstances, how do the Hungarians pull this back? How does Hartnick pull this back? More Hungarian troops and artillery. And better anti-tank and anti... He just, just needs a bit of everything, really, to be fair. Well, we're actually pairs of headshots coming on in. I mean, yeah. not the most ideal. This is IL too, so they've just been goddamn deadly. Yes. And that's a like it's a very good call in from Charles because the anti air department in Korok is not Hartnick. not great. I mean, goddamn Hartnick, my bad. I keep thinking the last replay is not great, and you need to, like multiple of those Messerschmitts out at the same time to really make a dent in these. In his airplanes. Well, there are airplanes are certainly making a dent in his ground equipment here. Uh, and actually, wow, I didn't even see the, uh, there's an M17 there. So yeah, that, that ME-19 is going to be pushed away pretty quickly. Yeah. And he's even got like, you know, like quite a few seconds of gunfire on the IR2, but still not enough to take down the beast. No, it was not. Just, bloody hell. Darlin really built them to last, I swear. The flying brick on a perch. I know. Black 11 half tracks, the SDK FZ 11s. Um, moving on in, unfortunately, even these elves over here are not going to be able to successfully turn about this town fight. Oh. And Jesus, before from about two kilometers away, who's just engaging everything. Freaking deadly, man. Eager is about to get uh, ambushed by a T-34 here, and gets the kill. Sneaky, sneaky maneuvering. Honestly, I'm just watching it as the infantry comes in, the Pigarens coming up, set up that hill, and he's getting shot to bloody hell. <laughs> no, it's, yeah. it's so painful to watch something like, you know, what do you call it, 30 points of, of material just get donated quite so, you know, blithely. It's just, it's mm -hmm. always rough to watch. On either side, doesn't matter who it is. And yes, Kato does make a wise decision. Discretion is the better part of Valor. He taps out, or she becomes a devilishly unsight, un, you know, unbalanced KT. Yeah, like 1,100 kill difference on the door. That is pretty huge. Looking at kills here, uh, T34 did pretty good, but that's really it. The weird thing is, is that there's not a hefty amount of per card, or per unit rather. No. But what there is, is consistent trading up. Yeah, there was the first Polis is a very good division on very certain maps, and on maps like that, where a lot of the fighting is very close range, they just, they just have so much stuff that works extremely well in that distance, and it's usually cheap stuff. But it works, Khan. It just bloody works. 
Well, it's certainly been shown today as Charles leads the polls, well, to the, to, well really to the poll position. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, that's where we are. Any final thoughts, my friend? No. Oh. Well, in that case, folks, we thank you, of course, for coming along with us to a second replay this week. In fact, I think we have a third kind of sneaking in the blinks, don't we? Do. Excellent. Well, folks, in that case, then, we will see you in a couple more days for the third replay of the week. Until then, I'm Connell Work. Rangaroo, take it easy.